Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. My name is Connor, and in today's video, we're going to solve a simple problem on leak code, and we're only going to solve it in APL. And the idea of this video is to show what it is like to iterate to a final solution in an array language like APL. Uh, due to the fact that APL has uh, very few keystrokes to express uh, an expression or an algorithm, it lends itself to making it really easy to explore different ideas. Um, Whereas in another language, it might you know be more typing and you might be um, less inclined to explore different possible ideas. Um, and so I thought this might be useful. Maybe not. Um, you can let me know in the comment, down, comment section uh, down below afterwards. But yeah, let's hop into the video and hopefully this video won't be too long. And yeah, so th this is a problem 2011 uh, from Leak Code Contest 259, which was held uh, yesterday, if you're watching this, on September 19th, 2021. And the problem is called final value after variable of variable after performing operations. And basically, you're given a list of strings, and the strings are one of four possible uh, strings. Uh, pre-increment, post-increment, or a pre-decrement and a post-decrement. And assuming that x starts at zero, the question is just asking you to compute the final value. So it's it's a pretty simple problem. You basically just want to map each of these decrements and increments to a plus one or a minus one, and then add those all up and get your final value. So because we have one uh, decrement and two increments, the final value for our first example is one. And for our second one, we only have three increments. So our final value is going to be three. So let's hop over to the ride editor and take this problem for a spin. So here we are in ride. We've got our example uh, from the first example on leak code. So if we type X here, we get our array of strings. And the first idea that I had when trying to solve this problem was to basically identify the number of decrements, regardless of whether it's a pre or post, and then to subtract that number from the length of the array. That's actually not even a correct solution, but we will, we will make it a correct solution in the process because I want to transparently solve this the same way that I did earlier today. So. Uh, the first thing I thought is let's use the membership glyph. So membership, basically given a value on the left, which here uh, we're going to use hyphen, and given a you know string or an array on the right, it will uh, return true or false whether that uh, value shows up in the array. So here it's going to give us one, which is the equivalent of true. But if I change this to a question mark, it's going to give us zero because there's no question marks on the array. So um, we can modify this. Um, and then put X over here. And this is going to give us zero, but that's actually because it's checking whether the string of a single character hyphen exists in X, which is a uh, array of strings, which is not exactly what we want. What we want is a resulting uh, vector or array of three Booleans, zeros and ones, corresponding to whether the hyphens correspond in the, each of the strings in the array. So in order to do that, we need to bind these two operations together. So this is turning the uh, binary uh, membership, which means it takes two arguments into a, a unary uh, operation that only takes a single argument. And then if we use the each operator, that's going to say perform this unary operation from the result of binding membership with uh, the hyphen um, to each of the strings in our array X. Uh, so if we do this, we're going to get back 1001, or sorry, 100, which is exactly what we want because there's only one hyphen in the first string. And then if we uh, want to know how many strings in total are decrements, we just sum these up. So we do a plus reduction. Uh, this is the reduce operator, and then we get back one. And so my thought after this was, OK, let's put this into a fork, AKA an S prime combinator, which takes two binary operations and uh, a unary, or, or sorry, one binary operation and um, two unary operations. So this is our first unary operation on the right. Then we want to take a uh, tally which is the equivalent of um, size or length in any other language as our second unary operation. And then we want to subtract the results of these um, two. So if we do this, we're going to get three minus one. Um, and that is the wrong answer, because as I mentioned before, subtracting the number of hyphens or minuses from the length of our array doesn't give us the correct answer. We need to multiply this two due to the fact that every uh, hyphen or minus is going to um, offset like an x. Um, and so if we do this, then we get the correct answer. And this is our first solution. So we can actually uh, assign this to A, and then we can get rid of the uh, parentheses due to the fact that this is in the form of a fork, which you can check out some of my other videos if you want uh, more details on what a fork is. So this is our first solution. This is pretty good, but I looked at this and thought there must be a, a more expressive way to do this or, or a better way to do this. So my second idea 
was to note that the middle character of each of these operations is always either a minus or a plus. The first one and the last one, you can never be sure because you don't know whether it's a pre or post increment, but the middle one you always know is either a minor or it's a plus. So I thought, what if we basically reduce this array of strings down into a single string, which just consists of the characters, the middle characters of our original uh, strings. And so in order to do that, you can use something called, I believe it's index. And if you do this, basically this value, it's going to uh, extract out of our string. So because we have uh, one index, index origin set to one, our middle index is gonna be two. And if we do this over our uh, strings in our original array, you're gonna get back the middle characters. And so once we've done this, we can basically do something very similar to what we did before, where we are, uh, instead of using membership at this point, we're just gonna go uh, hyphen equals. And this will give us back the same array. So then we go plus, then we go uh, two times, then we throw this in a, a, a defun or a lambda, which we did similarly, and then we, do, we throw this in the same um, uh, tally minus the result of this, and we're gonna get our uh, solution. So um, we can throw this whole thing in a, a defund, delete the X, call this B, and then we can pull up our first solution A, um, put that next to B, and, and there we go. So B clearly is not a better solution, but it was worth exploring that idea. And so my next thought after this was that, well, we've been trying to do this tally, um, this tally minus the result of the number of hyphens. What if we get rid of this tally and we just count both the hyphens and the pluses? Um, and so let's explore that idea, and we'll start with extracting the... Uh, middle elements again. So if we start from here, so what if we go first hyphen equals, um, then we can bind this together, put this into the middle uh, or the edge of a fork. So then we also go hyphen uh, compose with equal. And for the time being, we'll put this noise in here just to put them on top of each other. And I messed this up because we need one more hyphen in there. And if we do this, we'll get um, the first row of our matrix now corresponds to the pluses, and then the second row corresponds to our minuses. And now if we just replace this sort of matrix operation with minus, we're gonna end up with a negative one for each of our minuses and a plus one for each of our uh, pluses. And then we can just sum this up and then we get our solution, which uh, still is pretty bad in my opinion, but we're getting closer in that uh, this gave me the idea for our final solution. So uh, once again, let's put uh, A up on the screen, let's put B up on the screen, and now we have C. Um, and this C, when coding this up, made me remember uh, the very well-known solution to checking whether uh, a parentheses sequence is valid. So if you've got you know, left, 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 right, right, right. This is a valid parentheses sequence. How do you check this? Well, one of the ways to do it is to do an outer product with the left and right parentheses, um, checking whether these are equal to each other. Then you do a row-wise subtraction, and then you do a plus scan. And if at any point this goes below zero, you know that you've got more right parentheses than left parentheses up to that point in time, and it's an invalid sequence. And so we can do this exact same thing, but instead of um, left and right parentheses, we can do plus and minus. And I was sort of kicking myself when I um, discovered this because I thought, you know, how, how come it took me so long to see that, seeing as this is sort of a well-known pattern or solution to a, a pretty popular problem in the array languages. So, of course, we do this, and instead of doing equals, we're going to be doing a membership for our binary operation in our outer product. So this is the outer product, and this is the binary operation being fed to it. We do this, we get the same sort of pattern that we saw above, um, up here for the uh, left and right parens. And so now once we've done this, all we have to do is our row-wise reduction and then our summation, and we're good to go. So this is our final solution. And um, we can make this, uh, you know, put this into defund form, but this one actually is pretty easy to make tacit because you can basically just parenthesize this and put an identity there, and this will be the tacit form. Uh, so once again, we can put all our solutions up on the screen. We've got A, we've got uh, B, we've got C, and now we have um, D. And in my opinion, even though D is only a character shorter than A, um, it's point-free. It you know is losing four characters um, 
to the left argument of this outer product. Although, you know, that to be fair, um, A is losing three characters um, to their hyphen as well. Uh, but due to the fact that this is a pretty common, um, I don't know if you call it a pattern or an idiom that's used to solve the parentheses um, validity of the parentheses problem, I really like this solution. But we can actually profile all this stuff. So in the defunds library that comes with uh, dialog APL, we can use this function called compare x. And so if we go um, a x b x, it's going to time each of these expressions and then compare them. Um, I actually have not done this yet, so I would hope that D is the fastest. A could end up being a little bit faster, but my guess is that A and D are going to be the fastest and B and C will be the slowest. And sure enough, uh, that is the case. A little bit sad, yeah, that A is slightly faster. Um, but yeah, really cool, in my opinion, just to be able to iterate through this. Hopefully you found this useful or educational in one form or another. And yeah, the point of this video was just to show that when I'm solving something in APL, a lot of the times, you know, I don't really know what the correct solution is, and I'm just going to iterate in a bunch of different directions. But because of, you know, how few keystrokes it is to type out these solutions, and, you know, membership is a single glyph, and index is a single glyph, and, you know, uh, these, you know, S prime combinators, which are called uh, forks and trains in APL, are, are so um, concise in order to express these different composition patterns and these different algorithms, it just makes exploring the solutions to these problems, in my opinion, one, really fun, but also it's it's really easy. Uh, whereas, you know, doing this in C++ takes a lot more effort. And then to profile it is just a single line, which is awesome. Anyways, I'll end the video here. If you have uh, comments, alternative solutions in a different array language or sort of an idea that I missed, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'll also have in the description links to um, we'll throw links to, you know, APL, the ride editor, also JK, uh, BQN, other array languages, if you're interested in checking them out and yeah, hope you enjoyed and have a great day.